Last year, the hot list had 154 hotels. This year, it has 33, 33. hotels. Is this because the hotels weren't up to snuff, or has you, have you raised the bar? You know, I think it's it definitely we wanted to narrow the, the filter a little bit. I think people want fewer choices. I don't think they, the endless choices make you feel like we're not tightening the filter enough. I think we just we had a lot. There were a lot that did, didn't make the cut, but that were still great. A lot of people have been asking, is Condé Nast Traveler going to keep this truth and travel moniker? Absolutely. Uh, ever more truth, uh, I think. I think the idea is that we have stringers all over the world and we're getting fed bits of news at all times. I think that we're in keeping with sort of the digital age. We're following our, our contributors on social media and, and pulling from them. I think it's, you know, just a, a different age in which we get information not just from travel journalists but from our network of contributors. Um, you had a great cover in March. The issue uh, used a close up of Christy Turlington in the foreground with the travel yeah. landscape uh, reflected in her eyes. It was a little bit controversial. What is this cover saying? You know, just take a look. We're, we're different these days, and I think we, we have stopped seeing travel images because we're inundated with, you know, you get snapshots from your friends on Facebook all the time, and everything is kind of looking the same. I think the idea was to really turn heads and say, sometimes, you know, travel's also a dream state. It's not always about being in location and, you know, walking those streets, but about dreaming about your next trip, and we see the, the dream of her next trip but reflected in her lenses. What do you think will be the biggest changes a traveler under your tutelage? I think the biggest changes is alluding back, you know, what I was talking about before, this idea that we're pulling from a world of contributors, people who we have identified as somebody whose sensibility we share and, and tapping into that on the ground uh, sort of, you know, eyes and ears on the ground, which is something that we weren't able to do sort of pre-digital age. And I think now it's just about drawing from that network. You know, we spend a lot of time here, even at Bloomberg, talking about how you create content differently for different mediums, you know, Absolutely. whether you're creating it for a feature-length piece in a magazine or if you're creating a dig for a digital audience. Uh, where are you focused? Both. Everywhere. <laughs> I think the idea, you know, magazines, I feel a magazine like this is sort of here to stay because you do want that lean back experience with print and you get to touch it and smell it and dream about it and it's where our photography really shines. And then, of course, when you're on the ground and I want to know where can I get a bowl of noodles, I'm in the middle of Tokyo, I have an hour, that's when you want it on your, your mobile. Uh, Condé Nast Traveler, an interesting publication. We hear so much about the decline of the subscription model. Um, yours is one that actually thrives in particular on uh, newsstand sales yes. and magazines. Actually, newsstand is not, it, it's, uh, newsstand has never been our bread and butter. Oh. Its circulation actually okay. is, is really where we shine and we have kept our subscription base steady for all of these years. The advertisers you've been working with, are they still interested in advertising in print or do they want to use you in digital? All advertisers, I think, in our, uh, you know, across all Condé Nast titles, I think everybody wants a kind of the portfolio. They want, they want to be in print, they want to be in digital, they, they want to be part of what's next, of course. Where's the growth for Condé Nast Traveler? You know, are, is the appetite out there for international trips, for certain types of experiences, for domestic travel? You know, I think as travel gets easier and cheaper and, you know, there are the Airbnb B and B's, and it just has become more democratized. Frankly, uh, I think that people want to be in far-flung locales like you know Fogo Island, yeah. you know, in Newfoundland, and they also want to be here. I think that there's America is having a big moment. I think some of these second cities that you know have been overlooked and you know are now kind of front and center. And what's your favorite hotel on the list? Ooh, you know what? That Fogo uh, Island in is really, really amazing. Fogo it's Island. A, yeah, it's in uh, Newfoundland, and it's just you know, gorgeous to look at. It's up on stilts and it's, you know, in the remote reaches of, of the universe. So it sounds like a dream. I'll have to check it out. Yes, for uh, sure. Pilar Guzman joining us, the editor-in-chief of Condé Nast Traveler. Thanks so much.